Good evening and welcome to Oracle's Unified Method Part 2 where we will discuss where is the MD50, where is the MD70 and some tips and tricks how to, how to, how to go ahead with this new methodology OUM. This question has come often through my website, through, yeah, through some readers of my website. Where is the MD50 in OUM? For those not familiar with an MD50, it serves the purpose of being a functional design document in the previous Oracle legacy methodology called AIM. So the functional design document was primarily the purpose of was to design to make the functional specs of one or more components of the IT system, typically what the, what we call in Oracle jargon a custom extension. So why don't we have a direct replacement for the MD50 in OUM? In simple terms, the disadvantage of the MD50 approach is that it tends to lead practitioners into design mode too early in the process, where OUM encourages more emphasis on gathering and describing the functional requirements. So let me let me show you here the what we call again this is an important view I think I've talked to you about it on part 1 the OUM implement core workflow view Let me just take the security off my computer Let me put it back here So here the in the OUM implement core workflow this is all the steps So step number 1 you in the to do an MD50 the full answer is you capture the functional requirements within a use case. You develop your use case here in the RA23. Then what you do, you, you, you relate the groups and you, you package all the use cases that are similar together. Then you go create an analysis model for each of these packages. And then you consider creating an analysis specification, the AN100 as an index to each analysis model artifact. Voila. So that's what it is on the in, in uh, the MD50 does not exist. This is what you need to do. Use case model, group the use cases, you create an analysis model and you do the AN100 the analysis specs. So let's go look at at our at a, at a use case model. Well, what does that look like? As I've mentioned to you before, Oracle has changed their methodology into more pictorial diagrams, more diagrams. As we all know, text can be misinterpreted. Diagrams are less likely to be misinterpreted. So in this case, we have what we call a use case model for that. So to develop the RA23, in this task, the use case and actors are refined into a consistent model, creating what we call a first cut view of system scope. This is where you determine who or what interacts with the system, actors, and the objectives of this interaction. What are the goals of this interaction? Actors and use cases are refined in order to create a consistent model. At this point, you should, you should get a, a first use case details of how the future process will look like. Here, this example that comes with Oracle's unified methodology with OUM. Here, you're seeing you're representing system functionality that it will automate all or parts of the business op descriptions here. So as you see here, this is an example of a return product. So you see this is the customer, this is the point of sale system. What does the customer do? He scans his product, includes here, in, puts an include with a, it calculates the price, it returns the price back to the customer. The customer pays its bill. When the, the transaction is through, it generates a receipt and the customer gets it. And in the future, your customer is able to return the product 
you you need to be to make to make a transaction a financial transaction to your accounting system and advise the credit card company if it was paid by credit card as you see a lot of information in a simple diagram this is the future of Oracle's unified methodology diagram based like this UMLs and all that I'll call use case in UML all right so let's go see the deliverables so as you go further down you see the activities the work product the steps that are required I'm gonna go a little fast uh, here the approach that you follow these are best these are practices that they offer you and at the end you should see uh, they're gonna have template cases they have deliverables what is it? they have the RA23 use case model doc this is the example of that so let's close this and go see the go see the AN100 let me click on the AN100 AN100 prepare the analysis specification click this close this take the security off Again, the AN100, I'll just show you the deliverable at the end. This is an important graph. It gives you analysis specs, what is optional, what is not. You should always look at it, the AN100 specs, and it tells you what you should do, what, you, what is optional to do. And here, if you go further down, you always at the end. At the end, there's a, there's, a, there's a template that comes with it. Let me open it. Let me put the view one page. Uh, where is that one page here? I'm just going to... It's. It, here this is where I'm just gonna stop at the at the content page where you would get your business objective your user description but this is all pre it's it's already there uh, I highly recommend you use it you look at it and if you need you could translate it into any language Spanish French or Italian German uh, you, you could you, these these dot they're very easy translatable and you could put them back into the uh, a method and do the OUM methodology let me close this last point I wanted to bring up let me close this so the DS 140 oops just one second my phone let me just pause last point the DS 140 is your MD 70 prepare design specs and they're all here I'm not gonna go into over to over that because um, uh, I'll, I'll do another session for that but it's all the technical specs and how they've been breaking down again the methodology is iterative it's a different methodology it's not waterfall like the, the previous methodologies um, I hope you've enjoyed this second video of on Oracle's unified methodology I'll finalize the next one the next uh, part three and I'll discuss more tips and tricks on Oracle's unified methodology